Hello guys, thanks for joining me in another one. I do seem to have a little bit of a cold, so I'm sorry if my voice sounds gravelly. <laughs> Today we're just going to be talking about some things that started me thinking. So I've been watching the Manosphere for a while. I think my first one was Terrence Pop, and I really do. I actually like a lot of his content because it's not all just women bad man good blah 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 you know <clears throat> some of it's funny some of it is you know the obvious disparity between men and women as far as physical stuff and all this so it also has he also has stories about you know his life in the military which I of course being a military brat really um I like hearing so you know, I have watched him, I have watched Fresh and Fit, I have watched Abba and Preach, I have watched, um, oh no, is it Coach Greg? I've watched, um, oh, what is his name? He's really popular right now because he told a woman she's average at best. Uh, I can't think of his name. Anyways, I'll put it, I'll try and put it down in the comments if I remember or I'll tell you later. Um, so... But what I noticed watching these guys is although it's very good place for someone to start, just like MGTOW is, men going their own way, it's a very good place for guys to start. It's not a place guys can stay. Because here's the thing. There's a lot of hypocrisy in it, right? There's a lot of these guys are here to make money off of men because their dads didn't step up, basically. We're, we're living in a generation right now where men were not taught how to be good husbands, fathers, good men, they were just sort of left to figure it out on their own. So these older guys who know a little bit more, who maybe have a little bit more experience and stuff, are monetizing that thing. <laughs> that uh, what's going on, basically. So where there's a lot of good in it, because they can teach them, they can share their experiences and teach guys how to stay away from basically women who just want them for money or want to have their baby and leave and shackle them to those women um what they the bad part about it is that they then throw all women in that category which if you're a traditional woman you know you're not part of that and this is what i think a lot of people don't understand that is that if you had these traditional values running amok running around then a lot of you could have whatever law you wanted to as far as child support alimony whatever they would be they would be not moot but well basically moot because basically it wouldn't matter because women and men would not divorce each other if you had traditional values then the women we wouldn't be marrying willy-nilly, we wouldn't be having sex willy-nilly, we wouldn't be creating kids outside of these bonds of marriage where we create like this, where we create the true safe space where a, kid, a person can grow up having conversations about all kinds of ideas and, you know, developing into this person that we want society to look like, essentially. <clears throat> so I made a comment on her video that just it got me thinking too about sort of how to talk about this a little bit. So she's talking about how, you know, they're kind of just nowadays just entertainment. They don't have, they have some resources, but that's, you know, not much. Whatever speaks to your situation is what you have to take from it and then leave, which I believe you should do with most things anyway. So, but the hypocrisy I talk about specifically here is I say, you know, same, what really got me were the complaints about the cock carousel, but then saying it's fine to be promiscuous. That's basically setting up the carousel and keeping it going. You know, men and women need to return to traditional roles, right? And uh, I'll let somebody, you know, just look up cock carousel and you'll understand what that means. Um, <clears throat> because basically that's, basically that's women just constantly being promiscuous with multiple men but the thing is if the guys you know if she wasn't doing it it wouldn't happen and if the guys weren't doing it it wouldn't happen so you know it takes two to tango people you can't just <laughs> anyway <laughs> so let me see if i can get this to there we go so this guy arlindo's like there's no going back 
Um, <laughs> all girls are this. All girls are whores, basically. All girls are just out there laying down or jumping on to be, you know, to be sexual. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of these channels were never about traditional. It's all about adaptation, complaints about the cock carousel, and say, well, F it, let's just enjoy the decline. If the change does not come from a woman, well, it is over. All right. So from a traditional mindset, that's not true. Basically, women do need to change. If you're a woman out there who doesn't understand like how powerful her role is in a submissive role, and submissive again does not mean abusive, so I don't want to hear that anymore. In this submissive role where she is the underlying blanket or the the stronger thread in the fabric of society where the men are these the men are like the thick threads that throat flow through. You have to have it to create these finer, stronger threads that create the picture. Okay. Without the strong outer threads, you have no inner picture. Okay. Because you can't, you anchor that. If you've ever, if you've ever done any sewing, you know, you have some anchoring and men are that stronger thread of the anchoring. And then the women are these under threads that create a, a picture, right? for both men and women, because the women stay home with the children. They raise the future. A lot of times they do all this. So men and women have their roles. They have their place. Both are honorable and good. Okay. But when, when we just run around acting like kids and both sides, whoever, then it doesn't go anywhere. If anything, there's no strong lining, there's no tapestry, there's no beauty to the to the world because all we're doing is running around with just we're just like str stray threads. We can't get we can't get it together because we're refusing to take up our posts and do it. So <clears throat> he says to me, uh, I don't really understand this sentence. <laughs> to me, he sees that in order for change. This generation has to be sacrificed. And maybe that's true. I don't think so. I think this generation is turning around. There is no return. It is over. Okay. So I obviously don't agree with that. In a traditional mindset, the, the men lead. They lead change. They lead how protection, where we go, etc. If men start saying, no, I'm not going to, you know, start having sex with just this woman, this whore, basically. Because if you're just out there having sex with whoever regardless of relationship, regardless of what you're a whore. <clears throat> so if men stop visiting the horse and start wedding people up, like start marrying instead and start, you know, reconning the mother as <laughs> Terrence Pop says, reconning the life of these women, things will change almost instantly. It won't take years and years and years. It will take maybe two because here's the thing, guys control how things go, whether people like to hear that or not, they do. If a man doesn't have sex with you, if a man doesn't give you money because you're showing your boobs, if a man doesn't do this, that, or the other, then guess what happens? Nothing. You don't get money for that. You get no applause for that. You know, a lot of these women who are running around with no clothes on are, are doing it because one, they have no personal honor and two, <clears throat> they are celebrated for it by men and other women, right? We are all responsible for this situation. We all have to take our responsibilities up to change it. This guy says with all the exposure to instant dopamine rushes that people are used to, bringing that back will be an uphill battle on the side of a volcano. I just don't think so. I think men now are so fed up with how things are going, especially through the law, because the, the laws for men and family situations are re effing ridiculous. Um, I've never been one to, to be in favor of child support. I'm not in favor of alimony, none of that stuff. But now it's gone so far that men who don't even father children are paying child support through divorce, through improper DNA tests, through all kinds of stuff. And it is, that's an injustice. That's not your kid. You shouldn't have to pay for that kid. End of story <clears throat> for me. The idea that everyone just getting married again because it's the right thing to do is a fantasy. 
Well, I said traditional roles, not get married. Traditional roles doesn't necessarily mean everybody find a partner, you know, do si do round it up and get married again and get married. What it does mean is that each person has their own personal honor where they're not just out laying down for whoever comes by or however many, like you could have boyfriends and girlfriends, but don't have sex with them. Sex is a, sex is a totally different, you don't just have that with anybody. It has consequences, major ones. You know, I'm not even going to get into disease, but babies, your emotional and mental attachment to these people, if you cannot emotionally and mentally attach to these people, that is a consequence that we're seeing. Sex and marriage, the reason why sex is connected to marriage is because in marriage, you don't get to just walk off. In a boyfriend girlfriend situation, you get to just walk off. There is no connection. There's no me for you, you for me always. And I wrote a whole thing that I'm going to read at the end here. All right. That being said, there are plenty of men that view the times for what it is and will still do it. Yes, but that just makes you a whore too. Just because you're looking at this going, well, most of the women are whores. I'm just going to go off and whore myself off too. That doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it good. Doesn't change anything. You're, you are the problem now. You're part of it at the very least. <clears throat> and he basically just goes on to say, you know, I responded to him. If men return to traditional roles, things will change quicker than if women did. Cause I said earlier, like two years, but it, that's what it will feel like. <sighs> And he said, he just says it doesn't matter. Cat's out of the bag. Look, if we turn to these traditional roles where people have respect for themselves, they have personal honor. These are the, this is what I mean by traditional roles. I don't mean like run out, find yourself a wife, wet her up, and then try and stay together, you know, regardless of whatever. A traditional mindset is that each person has to have to have respect for themselves so that they can respect others. They have to have a love for themselves so that they can love others. They have to have <clears throat> a certain personal code of ethics. All right. Most people don't have that. If they do have that, then most of the time they've broken it. Okay. We human beings operate better or <laughs> at a hundred percent optimal range. If we follow the guidelines in the Bible, the Bible has the answer. People want to give up and say, no, there is no answer. We can't do it. Nothing's going to happen. It's all over, blah, 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 because it allows you to do what you want to do. It allows you to go out and whore around. It allows you to say, well, my problems are not based on the choices I made. They're based on what all these other people are doing. We're making a whole group of people, whether it's men or women, a scapegoat for what, what you've done in your own life. Like, so traditional role, having personal honor is taking responsibility for what you do. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what happened, <laughs> but something happened where all of a sudden now nobody wants to take responsibility for what they did, which side they, what part they played in it. So this all got me kind of thinking. And I wrote this thing. I was thinking maybe I'd do it in a separate video, but I thought really maybe showing you the, the genus of how I got here, why I was even thinking about this. Um, I was going to call it progressive feminism and marriage and yeah, this sort of, sort of, well, anyway, let me just read it. Okay. I'm going to move this actually up here. Cause that'll help me look at the camera while I'm reading it. Okay. Marriage in the relationship between men and women is a sacred thing inside Christianity. So here's what I'm, there, I'm just going to read it to you. Okay. Marriage in the relationship between men and women is a sacred thing inside Christianity. Throughout history, these relationship ties have launched wars, built societies, created peace, organized nations, destroyed them, built wealth and drained it. Like how we are tied together goes society. Okay. And you can see this most obviously through marriage. In marriage, we join families together. We create a beneficial place to raise our next generation of people. We have safety nets for when things inevitably go wrong. In marriage is the idea of loving beyond our faults, 
of helping through our lows and having someone to correct us when we were taught wrong by being abused ourselves. Marriage is so much more than, well, what do you bring to the table? Marriage is a, is a, is an idea that holds together the world. It's, this is not a thing where you, well, what do you bring to the table? You, this is not a business transaction. This is literally the fabric of society and reality because it, because it brings us together this way. When you enter into a marriage, this is how I've always thought about marriage. I don't think of marriage as a table that two people are sitting at and they're just bringing, you know, they're just stacking on a table. Marriage is a step into one of the, I'm going to get a little wooey here because I don't know how else to explain it really. Marriage is a sacrificial step into creating the future, into creating the next thought processes of the next people, of creating the, the, the literal physical future. Because in marriage, again, talking from a Christian perspective, you create, <clears throat> you have sex and you create children, which become the future. They grow up and they make decisions on, they vote, right? They grow up and they vote. They grow up and they protest. They grow up and they do nothing or they grow up and they do something big, something small, something medium sized that affects everyone. They grow up and they have the biggest impact on only one person, but for that one person, it is the whole world. And without you having that child, that one person doesn't have the help that they could have had, or they don't have the love that they could have had. This idea that marriage is a table to bring things to is it, it makes marriage like grass or something. It makes it just sort of something that you can step on, something that you can move around, something that you can just push off from and leave and then bring another person into it. That's not what it is. And this is why Christians fight so hard for marriage is because marriage has such a different, you know, the Catholics call it a sacrament because we have such a different idea of it. It is not just, well, I got together with this guy that had some legal paperwork and then we're going to have some kids and live the rest of our life or till we're happy. Because once I don't bring anything to the table anymore, once he doesn't bring anything to the table anymore, uh, it's kind of done. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not it. We're participating in something greater and something created from the dawn of time. It's like, it, it's so hard for me to explain. But to me, it's obvious, you know, that marriage the binding together of men and women to create children, to create children in a safe space or a positive environment where they can work through all these negative ideas and have a standing basis to jump from out into the world so that they can explore, that makes a difference. So I think I said, where did I leave off? Okay, you can see this most obviously in marriage, in marriage join families together. Yes. Okay. So there's a verse block in Christianity and it's a lot of, it's, it's about six verses, I think. <clears throat> One, two, three, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, it's eight. This is Ephesians five. It kind of shows you what I'm talking about here in that there's a physical aspect of it. There's a spiritual aspect of it. And then you represent literally physically the way God loves his church. So that's why you don't leave. That's why you don't abuse. That's why you don't, that's why you help each other because this is a physical manifestation, representation, whatever word you want to use of how God loves his church. Okay. So let's just read this. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. So this is, this is not, I brought this money to the table. I read that this is, he sanctifies her. He does <coughs> such a deep, um, work in her that in this, she knows, you know, I know without a shadow of a doubt, my husband's not going anywhere. 
because he believes this. Okay. So that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy without blemish. Here's the the beginning of the blending of the idea of church and God, right? In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Sorry, the ethos. Just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body. Again, he's comparing it to God loves his people, which, which they call the church. Okay, all of Christianity. <clears throat> and he calls it his bride. Okay. <clears throat> when he comes back. He's coming back to get his bride, not his kids, you know, his bride. There is a coming together whenever he comes here that is sort of a wholeness to it. Let's see where I live off. Okay. (coughs) Goodness, sorry. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. (coughs) This mystery is profound, and I am saying that refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Marriage is not some, it's not just a piece of paper, okay? It's not just, well, we come together as long as we can bring something to the table. It's not just, I marry you because you bring something to the table, Goodness, sorry. Let me get some water. Hold on. Okay, that's better. I'm just going to keep this by me here in case it keeps going. So, this has nothing to do, you know, Christians, we sin all the time. It is our goal not to, but we do anyway. That's something inside of our, um, that's something that the Bible addresses all the time, or addresses two or three times, actually. So this idea that, you know, women have to change as only women, men have no power, is wrong. Because essentially the way the universe was made, the way everything was made, is that when God laid down how things were going to work, he put men at the head of change, at the head of how things were going to work. The reason why we have so much whoring, we have so much... you know, Instagram models who just show off everything that they can is because men never fought for the sanctity of like this thing. They never, when their wives went crazy and said, well, she can wear that. That's fine. They were never like, no, you know, it wasn't as big of an outcry. In societies, sorry, hold on. And communities where that did happen in a much greater rate, let's say at least, well, I'll give it 48%. If at least 48% did it, you don't have this level of debauchery, basically. Okay, so it's going to take, because we are so ingrained with each other, it's going to take us both doing what we're supposed to do. So let me, I'm almost done. Marriage creates and extend families, creating the group that we're initially responsible to. This is where we learn right from wrong, learn how to care for others, where we learn how to be a responsible person, where we can ask the hard questions of life safely and work through those thoughts that may not be good ones. It's where we learn to fight for what is right. This is why when we fight for society, the family is attacked first is or rearranged or reassigned or redefined. Uh, it's why people try to redefine it when we want society to change. You want to collapse a society, destroy the family. And we are seeing that now. That's where we are. That's where we are now. Why it's going to take both to come back to it. And I go on about, this is, this, this was supposed to be about progressive feminism, but this is why I hate this kind of progressive feminism and then like the meninists are sounding exactly like them. Okay. Because it tells women that their responsibility is zero. 
They don't have to participate in creating a good life or society. That's for other people to do. That's other people's responsibility for making these things happen. They don't have to be moral. They don't have to be honorable or thoughtful. They don't have to do any of these things. On the sole virtue of being a woman, she's to be given everything or things are just to be made easier for her. And I don't agree with that. If you're a person who is not honorable, not thoughtful, not moral, <clears throat> life should be hard for you because you're doing it wrong. I mean, I just don't... So anyway, before I start rambling off again, <laughs> this is this is what it means to a Christian when we say marriage. It's not just, well, two people coming together because they love each other. It is a participation in one of the threads that creates reality. I mean, <laughs> if you look at... If you look at every single society out there, they have some type of marriage. You know, even if I don't say, even if we, even if I just stay, step back and say, you know, I don't talk about Christian marriage per se. Other societies have a version of marriage where it is this man and this woman, this man and this woman are responsible for each other and the children that they create. And then that has, creates responsibility inside the little society that's there. Which then creates the rest of the rest of the going on of that society because they're the ones that teach the traditions. They're the ones that do all of that stuff. <clears throat> they don't have a lot of societies uh, who are that are smaller. Don't have things like what what we have here in the West, where they leave the house and go to somebody else to teach them about life. No, their parents do that. Their parents teach them the traditions and things like that. And that's where we need to be. I mean, that's what is going to turn things around. So anyways, guys, I'm sorry that this video is long. I did get a little rambly. <clears throat> I try not to do that, but even when I rein it in, I just think of other things that could be said. So anyway, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. I don't know what the next one's going to be about, but I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye. Oh, remember to pray and read your Bible.